Hello Giants fans, Phil Davis here, joined by a special guest. We're just out the back here, up in sunny Gold Coast. I'll get that out. And Josh, welcome. Thanks for having me, Phil. I was going to do a This Is Your Life kind of vibe. I forget the, who hosted that. I think it was Ray Martin or something like that. But this is a bit different. This is This Is Your 150. Um, you're playing your 150th game this Sunday, Essendon. Um, I guess, where do we start? I, I like to start on the night that it all started, which was the draft night. But you would like to go back a bit earlier than that. And this is where the whole chip on the shoulder thing can happen. So Melbourne had the rights to pick two and they traded it out to get Dom Tyson and pick nine. And so you were likely to go to Melbourne for pick two. What was that experience like? So you got, you're a Brighton boy and basically you love Brighton and you love Victoria. And the first <laughs> seven picks were Victorian or eight picks were Victorian and all of a sudden the Giants go to pick two. Yeah, it was... Um... It all happened reasonably quickly. I remember the season finished and um, yeah, there was Giants pick one and then I think it was Melbourne and a combination of Bulldogs and St Kilda and um, you know, you're obviously being a young bloke, you're looking at the phantom drafts and um, taking that into account and uh, you know, most of them had me going in that top five area and then yeah, within a few days, Giants had traded up to pick two. Um, Giants had already come round to my house to give me a presentation. Had Craig Lambert and a couple other guys there, and you know, I was really impressed by it. But in the back of my mind, um, wasn't sure how realistic that was going to be if I was going to um, end up at the Giants. And then in a matter of days, yeah, it was uh, they had pick two and got the phone call from them, and they let me know that they'd be picking me up with pick two. And you know, everything uh, kind of flipped on its head. I knew I'd be going up to Sydney, Sydney, and settling in there. And um, yeah, it was, it was a bit of a whirlwind initially. And there are different ways to cut the cake on that situation. How I look at it is Melbourne had a chance to get you with the second pick in the 17-year-old pick. They took Jesse Hogan. So they said, uh-uh, Josh, no. And then they had picked two. They could have gotten you. They said, uh-uh, we'd rather just slide to pick nine. Um, so obviously Melbourne didn't rate you. I'm very glad the Giants did. Um, but then it brings us to the draft. You go pick two. And the Gold Coast had the draft for a few years in a row. The draft before you and maybe the draft after you. And these cliche photos of boys in full kit running along the beach. Um, and I'm gonna ask you, did you think you were beach ready at that age? <laughs> yeah, so we actually did one of those shots and I was far from it. I, um, if you look at the pictures from the night, I reckon I would have, oh, I was skinny. I was, um, the rumours is there was no seven in front of your weight the night you got drafted. There were a lot of sixes. Oh, I might have, yeah, I was, I don't think I would have been 70 kilos, <laughs> honestly. I would have snapped in the wind. Um, but no, looking back on those photos, it's pretty funny. I think I put on about, yeah, a bit over 10 kilos since I got drafted. Um, and yeah, I, I do actually, I was just showing Tom Green the photo before and it, yeah, I'm, I look I look about 14 years old, and, and at the time you don't think that, or you just think you're, you know, ready for the AFL system and ready to play against you know men. But looking back on that photo, I had a bit of work to do. You go through preseason, you basically have a faultless preseason. You don't get selected for round one, 2014. Um, we have a bye, and then you debuted. I feel like you debuted potentially in the green vest against St Kilda. Yeah, you yeah did round two. As the yeah. sub. But one of my favourite memories of your early time in your career was round three that year. We played Melbourne in the wet at Giants Stadium and you kicked a few. And it was a real night. I thought it was your first full game against the team that said, uh-uh, we don't want you twice. <laughs> twice. And you kicked two or three in that game? Yeah, two goals in that game. And your game. first was, win. And first win, yeah. So that was, it was a big build-up. You know, the sub was quite a... An interesting time. I was in a fan of the sub, but anyway. You were a fan, yeah. I've been a young player, though. You were usually handed the vests pretty regularly, so I wore that a few times. And in the first game, it was pretty, pretty nerve-wracking. I think I sat on the bench for three quarters against the Saints, and it close was a close game, close game mm. came on and um, got a touch early, which was good. Got thrown straight into the centre bounce. And talking about how light and skinny I was, I wasn't expecting that. So that was good. And um, that one ended up going down to the wire. I think we lost by a goal or so. Yeah. Tom Hickey destroyed us. Yeah, and then um, 
yeah, round three against the D's, wet day. Uh, couldn't get much going early, I remember, and I was a bit worried about the sub vest, um, getting the red vest. But yeah, in the end, was able to kick a couple of goals in the last and had a win. So it was a pretty, pretty special day and a pretty special way to, um, I guess, you know, have a full game of footy and get a win in my first, you know, proper game. So you. you you're towards the back end of your eighth season now and you've played 150 games. So you basically had, you know, apart from a few injuries here, you've predominantly played AFL football. But I am going to reflect on a Neefel story. <laughs> um, we played together. I was coming back from my kidney injury. It's because I watched that St Kilda game out of ICU, which was cool. Um, and uh, we played against Northern Territory Thunder about round 13, I think it was, that year. You got dropped, yeah. which is quite a good lol. Um, and I believe all these people go back and they play twos and like, oh, I played really well. I had 29 and kicked two or I had 31 and kicked one. I'm going to get the stats wrong, but I believe you had 44 and six or something along those lines. And we were just like, okay, he's too good for here. <laughs> I Can think you tell us the stats? Yeah, you've bumped me up. I think it was... You were no, definitely I think I 44. Had one, I had one where, yeah, I think it was 44 and two. And then I round up. I think the next week stayed down and had four thirty six and four. I think so. So you were too good for the twos, which we love. No, no, it was. And then you slowly, you slowly developed. There's nothing wrong with being too good for reserves football because you're <laughs> you're obviously a nice player. Um, I've played about thirty games of reserves while we're there. <laughs> That's um, I have. And then um, anyway, you progress, you progress, and everything's going well. You're 2017 All Australian. Um, we had a lot of injuries. You played a lot of midfield that year. Um, developed. I presume you'd probably argue that was one of your best seasons so far. Yeah, it was a good it was a good year for me personally. I mean, we did have a few injuries early in the year, and I, and I wasn't. Um, I'd spent the year before that playing on the wing, and um, I guess building towards a player I wanted to be, and and that felt like the natural progression to go into the midfield the next year. And um, you know, unfortunately, we had a few mids go down, so that was probably even accelerated more than. Um, the club and myself would have thought so to get a good crack in there was yeah I mean for everything to come together the way it did I think as a team we were playing some really good football I was playing alongside you know a really strong midfield and um, made it to the prelim that year which was you know still an amazing day that our first I think it was our first prelim when we went up against the Tigers 16 um, we, we lost the doggies I love that you've erased that few memory so have I yeah you, I have I have erased that <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it was a, it was good to you know I guess take that step in you know, AFL football that you know I always believed I could um, you know be a good strong consistent player at AFL level, but then to go out and actually um, do it consistently for a year um, in the midfield was um, you know something I'm proud of and um, something where I want to hold myself to that stand going forward. And then 1819, um, the infamous groin time. You still played a fair bit of footy, which is obviously a frustrating period in your career. Um, I don't remember your 50th, so we don't have to talk about that. Um, your 100th was the 2018 yes. uh, elimination final, the SCG. Yeah. And I feel like you hurt yourself. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Meniscus. Meniscus, Meniscus that's Sunday. right. And yeah. obviously a great night for the footy club. Yeah. Um, and we won. Did we win your 50th? Uh, we did. We played Carlton. I like this. So we yeah. won your 50th, your 100th, and we're playing your 150th. This is nice. Look out, Essendon. Um, <laughs> And I, I guess we've probably covered off a fair bit of your, of your career now, and obviously you're in, in, in great form here. So I probably just want to now pluck out a few anecdotes and stories and questions now, just you know, spasmodically amongst your career. I guess uh, the first one I'm going to talk about uh, is we've got to get it out in the open. We've got to talk about your dog. Um, <laughs> you've got a beautiful dog called Kobe. Um, you want a Cocker Spaniel? Cavador, Cocker Cavador, Spaniel, Cavador, Cross Spaniel Lab. Cross Lab? Yeah. And you got him, I believe, let me do my maths here, you are out of contract that year, so that was 2000 and start of 2017? Uh, yes, that was 20, yeah. And 17. you got him during pre-season and you were single at the time. Shout out to Lucy, he's your current partner. And um, you got a dog and you realised that being single, living in an apartment in pre-season training wasn't a great mix. So what did you decide to do? Yeah, so you're right, I wanted a companion. I wanted someone... You were looking for Lucy, but she wasn't there yet. Yeah, so yeah. I, I got Kobe and he was an absolute legend, but the issue was I was in a one-bedroom apartment, very small courtyard, no grass. Um, he's a bit cheeky, so I, I feel like I raised him, taught him everything he needed to be taught. 
great personality, beautiful dog. And then, honestly, it, I felt bad for him. He was stuck in his courtyard all day, probably you know two by two meters when I was going off to training, pre-season, big days. Didn't think it through. We got into the season. We travel every second week, so was palming him off to the neighbors. And I just felt bad, so gave him to mum and dad. <laughs> <laughs> And, and he lives a wonderful life, so. Um, that's another important one I think that to talk about is your contract. Obviously, um, it's always mentioned. Uh, what do you have to say about that? Um, oh, it's all, it has spent a bit of time in the background, but to be honest, it's something that I've always just let sit in the background, um, the club and myself well, always. I'm not talking about, I'm talking about your living contract. You, <laughs> you're still living in that same apartment that you lived in for five or six years and you've said you're going to be moving, but yet I want to know why you haven't moved and why you just keep on extending that contract at that apartment. <laughs> no, I'll just, um, I don't know, like where I'm living, no need to change. <laughs> Athletes are often habitual beasts. They love, you know, process and structure and, you know, following certain routines. And you're one of the best I've seen in the sense of that you love a routine. I don't want to get bogged down too much into the specifics, but I think everyone needs to know about how many calories you've approximately eaten before every one of your 150 games, because your, your food consumption is actually concerning. <laughs> yeah, I don't have numbers, but I don't know. I've just always liked to go into games feeling like I'm full of energy. And I feel like the best way to do that is just eat food. And I'm naturally not a big guy. You're so the biggest eater I've ever seen. Yeah, I'm naturally not a big guy. So luckily I can, um, I can eat a lot of food and not feel heavy. Uh, it's all, to be honest, it's always been normal to me. It's, it's only been put in my mind by you guys. And there's only you know, one, there's only one non-negotiable though. We go to a cafe for our brunch day before a game. What is the one non-negotiable? Crispy bacon. It has to be crispy bacon. Yeah. It's unbelievable, but... Uh, it's just no, it's no guarantee, so. Josh, you've been a terrific teammate. You've had some of the best games I've seen out of 150. So I wish you all the best for Sunday 610. Thanks, Phil. Appreciate it. It's been fun.